Well, hello, good morning, and welcome to our latest Bath Life Business Club. This time it's about business services, and once more it's sponsored by Mojas Druid. I hope this finds you in at least reasonable form, uh, given all that's happening. Uh, we will, of course, be referencing what's happening, or rather what's not happening, uh, but not dwelling on it too much. What we're seeking to do today is to discuss with three business services uh, in Bath uh, about uh, how their businesses have been, uh, how their clients have been responding to these times, how they've changed, uh, what's better, uh, not what's worse, to be honest, that's a bit dull, uh, and what they think of the year ahead. We'll be speaking with Joe Kangas of uh, Keystone HR, Dave Dixon of Minuteman, and Ronnie Hannon of Transform Communications. Please send your questions using the Q&A button below. You can ask anonymously or in person as you wish. Do add your name of your company to your actual question so we can see who that is as well. And note that today's Business Club once more is being recorded and will be on our Bath Life YouTube channel uh, this afternoon. First, some news from Bath Life uh, before we get going. And if I may say, uh, thank you to all of you who continue to support Bath Life. Uh, it is much appreciated. We can be the harbingers of the good things that are happening in the city. We do, of course, have that very close relationship uh, with you from a commercial point of view. The more you can support us, the more we can help spread the good things that are happening in Bath and help the celebrate, celebrate the business successes. We've got a special Bath Life business surgery coming up in, in early Feb. We'll be announcing it very shortly with Mojo Stewart. It will be across several of their disciplines, including, but not limited to, as lawyers want to assert, a dispute resolution, such as that big insurance claim story, which broke on Friday, employment and HR, continuing uh, uh, issues, of course, and corporate and commercial issues. Uh, it's a sort of, um, it's a group of, uh, uh, their, it's not the same vertical approach we've had previously, it's across most of their disciplines. Please ask any questions in advance and we will seek to find some, some useful answers and useful perspectives for you. Beyond that, there is a, a unique uh, business surgery with Basma Uni on iStart, which is about skills and reskilling, and also one with Juice Recruitment, uh, and we'll share dates of both of those very shortly. These Bath Life business surgeries are bespoke deep dive sessions showcasing companies' expertise through discussion. Please do talk to us about how you might like to be involved. We can all do with advice, and frankly, we can also all do with new business, and they're a great way of showcasing your talent. The awards, uh, the Bath Property Awards, I, I hope uh, some of you at least will know this, are now part of the Bath Property Symposium, which will be taking place virtually on uh, Friday 12th of March. There are a limited number of networking hubs available, and I'll explain what they are. They're a, a vital and much needed way to network, which frankly has been denied to us all for 10 months. In some ways it seems longer, but for, a, for nearly a year at any rate now. These hubs are sort of, they're a bit like a, a box at the rugby, the cross between that and, and a trade show. It's a chance to curate a, a session to meet people and actually generate the new business, which we all need, uh, as well as to, to meet some, uh, some familiar friends and so on. We do also have uh, tickets on the website. They're, they're not, uh, they're not uh, onerous in terms of cost, but again, it's that chance of getting in front of people, meeting people and so on. Um, if you want to join for our keynotes, uh, we'll have uh, leading insights on residential property and commercial property. To meet with that greatest array of Bath professionals since before the prelapsarian times back in 2019, uh, please do take a look. And then of course, it includes the awards. And we're delighted to say our latest uh, sponsor of the session is Interaction. And with Interaction, by the way, we've had uh, a couple of very good business surgeries with exploring workplace culture uh, and the, the design of our offices particularly. Bath Life Awards, well, we've actually got a launch event next Thursday, uh, Jan 28th, one loses track of the days, uh, at 10 a.m. Please register for free. Um, we've got some, I think it's about 80 people already registered for that, which is superb. I register for free on the link uh, on the Bath Life Awards Twitter or LinkedIn. And we'll have some big news, can't say what, some big news on the awards. Um, and I think I would like, uh, if, if I may, to give a, a bit of a virtual round of applause to our uh, sponsors of the Bath Life Awards currently, uh, and clearly there are other opportunities. Headline sponsor, once more, of course, the Royal Crescent Hotel and Spa, plus Apex City of Bath Hotel, Bath Audi, some not called Bath Life, Clearly PR, new this year, which is great to see. Uh, Enlightened Lighting, Hotel Indigo, Marsh Commercial, Minuteman Press, um, one of our speakers today, uh, Novia, Savills, Spaces, Stone King, and True Speed. 
a great roster of clients. And if you're interested in being a sponsor, you would be in that peer group of leading Bath businesses. Uh, please do talk to us. We all need ways of generating new business and the awards are a particularly effective and efficient way of reaching all the businesses in Bath. The nominations are open uh, for those awards. And again, please come forward, make your case. Okay, uh, let's go. Let's have a word with each of our speakers first and then uh, as a panel. And yes, do pop through your questions. Ronnie, uh, could I ask you to, to step forward first, please? Absolutely, good morning, Greg. Hello. Oh, afternoon now. Well, okay. If we're going to start off on that note, <laughs> it, is, it is indeed afternoon, and yeah. um, and I know you, you you much prefer to be started, with Ronnie. Uh, so I'll, I'll please refer thank you in a much sort of friendly way. Um, so tell us about uh, Transform, uh, a marketing and PR business, been around since two thousand six. Um, huh, in brief, what's the pandemic been like for business for you? Oh heavens! Uh, I think I think like anybody, if I'm honest. And excuse me, building work has just started next door. So if there's a background drilling, timing noise, is all. Yeah. That it always. Um, I think like anybody, it it hit quite hard and quite fast. So you know, we'd we'd heard of what was happening abroad, and then suddenly, 23rd of March, um, we packed up the office and went back. And and the initial first few months were really really. Uh, worrying, concerning as projects. Everybody was looking to conserve income because nobody knew what was happening. So a lot of projects were put on hold. Um, quite a few of my staff members were furloughed, um, which was tricky, which was difficult. We're a small team and we're used to working really collectively together. And then as summer began, I think for all of us, our emotions settled, uh, both clients and internally, and people began to, to look ahead to, to change and adapt, to think, how can, I, how can I actually get through this? And what we saw was a number of clients taking big strategic leaps, if you like, choices. Mm -hmm. Could you, could you give, um, without, you know, client confidentiality to one side, but uh, could you give a, an example of the type of strategic thinking that people have been making or the changes they've been making? So we, we saw um, one client had diversified into new sectors and new areas, so decided to, um, to really spread the risk and therefore wanted to be able to get marketing communications out around that. So, in, you know, they'd been primarily focused in, in hospitality and retail, obviously one of the hardest hit sectors, mm. um, and they were looking across at other sectors. So they, they'd started to sort of want to, to pull forward some of those different aspects. Um, we saw quite a lot of brand development going on. So quite a lot of businesses going, how do I position myself differently? or I, I want to take this time to properly think about where I want the business to go in the future. Mm. So those, those were sort of bigger, more explorative conversations that were happening. But presumably many clients uh, simply hunkered down, sort of pulling the metaphorical blanket over their heads and just, just getting through it. For, for those first initial months, right. yes. Absolutely. Um, very, very much so. Nobody knew what was happening. And, and there was a, a lot of, of, you know, OK, let's just put things on hold. But by June, July time, actually, every project that we had that had been on hold was back and other projects were coming forward at quite a pace. So that that's been us then coping in a in a new environment or working remotely the team you know spread across five six home offices homeschooling yes. working from home bandwidth all of those different things having to get used to um but the the p last part of the year has been very positive and you know we we've taken our own uh creative leaps as well in terms of where we want the business to go and uh, you've done that that rare thing of launching a new business <laughs> new wing of the business perhaps in uh, in these times uh, can you just briefly tell yeah. us and multiply why why so um i, I will give, give absolute credit to um dan o'connor who joined us in november um and one of the things that uh we spoke about in a very long drive to and from newcastle where one of our clients is based um was how how do we actually add more value and we had looked at so transform communications does content marketing pr and thought leadership um and we tend to stop it at the point in which some of those assets that we create particularly in the thought leadership get taken out to the press so you know they might get printed by by dave 
they then get sent out to clients. They can do that either physically, not so much at the moment, or um, digitally. And we'd lost sight of that digital arm. So Dan and, and I had this discussion about how could we actually bring that on? And then we got really busy. And it was like, yeah, that's a great idea. We'll, we'll put it to one side uh, because we're, we're all sort of full in terms of what needed to be delivered. But during um, Corona and during those initial times, actually we began to, to think creatively. How, how could we do it? What would it look like? And we used that downtime to really pull everything together, to get the thinking right, to design the website, to put together the propositions in the different service office. Yeah. And, and, you know, that, that was, I, I would say for, from our perspective, it might sound rash to launch it, but actually we had the time and the space to properly think and consider things, which in normal business life is very difficult for anyone. Yeah, I mean, all of us um, uh, have to take the positives and want to take the positives. And that, that time to, to contemplate about why you do, do what you do is, is very valuable. And um, uh, if I may just uh, put in a, a very subtle plug, which isn't subtle, um, when we're talking about um, uh, marketing of content, uh, there is no finer channel in Bath than Bath Life. So it, it provides a longer form opportunity to, to showcase an expertise. And that's exactly also what our business surgeries do as well. Uh, yes, yeah, absolutely. Another. Uh, you know, our, our areas overlap. Um, thank you, Ronnie. You mentioned, uh, if you step back, please, we mentioned, you mentioned Dave. Let's have him step forward uh, and then we'll have a, a panel session in a moment. Um, but Dave, good morning, sir. That's it, or afternoon. That's a particular... Uh, good afternoon, Greg. How are you? I am well enough, but that's a particularly fine bookcase you've got behind you. It's a wonderful bookcase. I made it yesterday, Greg. Uh, yeah, and I, I'm assuming you've read all those, uh, those titles. Uh, so certainly not at all. No. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, the, uh, the, the, the clever truth is that that's um, uh, it's some combination of a virtual and an actual backdrop. So that's it's, it's definitely it's definitely printed. It's yes. just that I'm just hoping it doesn't fall down on us, bro. Yeah, that, that'd be a bit embarrassing for the, the old brand uh, values, wouldn't it? Um, uh, printed, of course, by Minuteman. And um, so tell us how, um, how Minuteman have been uh, in this pandemic uh, in, in brief, if you may. Yeah, well, since last March, I'd say we've been through three different phases of a pandemic, Greg. Um, First lockdown, we, um, we we pretty much had nothing to do at all. B business halted for the best part of six weeks. Um, we had a bit of life come back in June. Um, with, uh, with, with, with people needing signage, trying to reopen. Uh, I, I think we printed more graphics uh, in in a space of about six weeks than we've ever ever done before. Um, you know, we then we then went through, and, and it's difficult. You know, you, you suddenly you know a decent sized team and. Yeah, we, we furloughed pretty much everyone in the company for six weeks. It's nice for me. I was uh, it's the first time ever I've had any period of time where I've had absolutely nothing to do. Uh, how did you I find that? Know. I mean, you're 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 a, um, an uber gregarious uh, sort of character, and and that's um, being being penned in. You haven't got the well, then at least didn't have have work, and more latterly, you don't have the the social opportunities. Um, how have you found it personally? Yeah, I've, I've always been I've always been busy. I've always been a busy person. You know, if I go back a number of years ago when I was on council and you know marrying that up with with, with a business as well, you know, we, we were super busy then. As a company uh, here, we we operate on here and now. Uh, it's, it's it's never never a quiet moment here for us. So suddenly, be someone who who works you know a, a lot. Uh, with you know under a lot of pressure quite often to to then have pretty much nothing to do um it is quite something we you know we took on some projects at home we we, we built the patio i was going to do part of it myself but look i got called back to uh to, to activate some other projects here in the office um so, so i ended up bringing someone else in which was probably the best idea i ever had because i guess to be fair me doing manual work making a patio is not the best idea in the world um but it was, yeah, it, it was, it was certainly challenging. You know, I'm lucky I've got a wife runs her business from home and, and managed to help support that a little bit as well. Um, and you know, the kids who, who kept us busy, big load of change for them as well. We'll um, we'll come on to some uh, some aspects of business for you and uh, and for our other duo um, about clients, about how trading has been and so on. Um, but one last to you, which is about the bounce back scheme, uh, which you launched in uh, in the spring. Um, uh, just briefly, what what that is, but really, um, how do you assess its impact and importance now? 
Yeah, um, back to back um, went really well. It, it's um, for those who don't know, it's uh, in essence a free listings site uh, where our customers and anyone else can put up a listing, give people an update as to what they're doing in business at the moment, and, and then we shared that through our five odd social media channels. Uh, we sent out packed window stickers and COVID signage and things like that out to uh, out to those who registered. It was completely free. You know, we, we saw it as an opportunity to help market our customers and those who aren't our customers in around the city. Uh, really, really well received. We're still getting signups now. We've got over 200 on the site and, you know, we'll continue to update that. Uh, I think it's important as, as a city to come together to help promote what each other are doing. You know, and that's, that's the only way. Um, yeah, really and, um, and, and Dave, as, as you and I hope uh, uh, everyone watching knows, that, that's very much part of uh, the same thing. We're, we're absolutely aligned with, with Bath Life, um, whether it's Bath, Bath Together celebrating uh, the good that people do, more generally showcasing the, the great things that are happening in the city. Uh, we all, in our different ways, all play our part. And, uh, you know, you, you've been a stalwart to that uh, over years. So uh, thank you for that. And Dave, if you step away, we'll have, uh, have Joe join us. Uh, Joe Kangas, uh, founder of uh, Keystone HR. Uh, been, uh, you've been in business for, for, for quite some time on, on, uh, in, in Keystone, but um, you've never experienced anything like this, of course, with this roller coaster in, in no, your absolutely. area. Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, no, I've been, been. Run, running Keystone HR for five years now and um, working with clients across lots of different sectors. Um, but when March hit, yeah, it was definitely a steep learning curve, not just for my clients, but also in the world of HR. Um, you know, the dreaded word furlough, which was a lifeline for many businesses, but lots of people have never even heard of the word furlough. Um, and from my point of view, it was about learning it as quickly as I possibly could. And the government sort of helpfully would release updates and changes on a Friday evening. Um, so I'd be sitting there with my gin and tonic, digesting all of this new information ready to communicate out to clients on the Monday. Um, so, so, sorry, sorry. what's this thing called a gin and tonic? I, I don't remember. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, dry January over here, anyway. No, no, with homeschooling, there's no such thing as dry January. Uh, 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 yeah, uh, I can entirely understand that. And, and it's odd how furlough was, was much more, more of an American term, an American concept, and then suddenly it's become front and centre for virtually every single individual, every business. But I want to ask you one, one specific question about, about HR in these times. Employees are uncertain, yeah. uh, employers are, are worried, or maybe it's the other way around, you could argue both. Um, and you're sort of caught in the crosshairs between both. You must be being pushed and pulled about trying to help give advice or interpret what is happening. How, how has that been for you personally? Yeah, I mean, it's, I have been sort of absorbing. I've been a bit like a sponge. Um, a lot of my clients are owner-managed businesses. Yeah. Um, and obviously, depending on their sector, they've just been head down survival mode, which has sort of meant that a lot of the kind of communication and well-being side has come secondary and that's where I've been sort of plugging that gap for many of my clients um, mm. you know listening to the concerns of the employees you know making sure that communication goes out um, you know raising well-being and mental health as a you know really key issue within the business yeah. um, so almost like taking that burden off the managing director so they can actually focus on keeping the business going. I want to I want to come to a a, a tougher area for uh, for you as, a, as an observation rather than as a, a hard point. Uh, the fellow scheme has clearly been extraordinarily welcome always round, um, but of course there is a view and it has uh, has resonance that it, it has essentially delayed unemployment in some cases, and thereby uh, you know down the line there'll be far more disputes coming from companies and individuals. Are, are you sort of sadly therefore expecting to be busier as the scheme unwinds um yeah i think there's been various periods in the last sort of nine months where i've seen an increase in redundancies and then the furlough scheme's been extended and then that's you know kept people's jobs going for longer but i think come april i am anticipating that there will be more restructures um mm. more redundancies so sadly yeah that's one of the kind of more negative sides of doing this role None of us know this, and probably not even Rishi Sunak or Boris Johnson knows this, but um, there have been increasing calls, as there have been at various times, which the government acceded to, to extend or taper the furlough scheme, uh, most recently from the CBI just last week. Um, given that the, the virus is going longer and deeper than anyone had previously expected, 
it's not impossible that there might be some extension to it. But who knows? Who knows? Um, we, yeah. um, Joe, we wish you all the best in, in helping helping your clients uh, navigate through those times. If you stay on, uh, we'll call back uh, Ronnie and Dave uh, and come to more uh, uh, general points. Okay. Uh, Dave, hit that button. I'm trying to hit it. You're not, not <laughs> usually a shy man. Ah, uh, there we go. There you go. Lovely. Look, um, uh, let's be frank. It's clearly uh, this, these times have been uh, reasonably or unreasonably dismal uh, for a number of areas. Which sectors have been OK for you each? Which have been, you know, reasonably good? I, go. I think um, anything home improvement related, um, the clients that are working in those sectors have seen, you know, massive sales. I've got a couple of clients who... 2020 was their best ever year um sort of who are in the you know interior design or um kitchen extensions that kind of sector but is yeah. that just take that point um not necessarily the sectors but for you ronnie in terms of mm. comms, is there an element of um dare i say almost survivor's guilt people who don't want to draw attention to the fact that actually they're doing fine um because so many yeah. people aren't and the mood music is uh, is pretty pretty low key so i i think we, we really work quite hard with clients on how to position that because yes, you know, there, there have been some, some real winners out of this. We've got clients um, in kitchens, bedrooms, bathrooms, um, like Joe mentioned, that have, have actually done quite well, even with showroom closures. We also have clients in um, financial services who have done you know, maintained, kept quite going quite a lot. We've launched new tech platforms. So businesses are still working and doing things. But how you mention that and how you talk about it, I think is you do need some sensitivity. You know, you can't go out saying, yeah, hey, you know, we're up 235% year on year and it's all been fantastic because people are aware that the climate is, is difficult for everybody, both on a personal and a professional level. Mm. And, you know, that, that also comes down to how people, how people get customers. You can't, you can't sell overtly at the moment. People don't want to be sold to, but it is about building connections and collaborations. And I think that that's where we've seen real companies really progress in using this time to, to collaborate. We'll, um, we'll, we'll come back to uh, new business generation in, in, in a tick, uh, if I may. But Dave, just to take you, um, which sectors, I mean, by all means, talk about individual companies, if, if you wish, but which sectors have actually been, uh, you know, pretty good? Um, yeah, again, similar story for us, really. It's been property and construction. Um, we've had a few companies who took their quarter time, as did Ronnie, to go through three brands. Uh, so we've been doing a bit of work there. Um, We've also actually seen a lot of the door-to-door -door direct mail type work increase. A lot of businesses are realizing that their customer bases uh, are no longer in the city center and no longer in offices. They're at home. Uh, best way to reach people at home is still by far by stuffing something through their letterbox. So we are, you know, we're really, you know, but that's, that's really increased for us as well. Interesting you should say uh, the best way to reach people is stuffing things through their letterbox because that's um, not quite the stuffing bit, but that's what we've been doing with Bath Life. We've, uh, we've changed our distribution. So, of course, it's, it's almost exclusively uh, residential at the moment, precisely for that reason. People at home, they've got time. That's where to reach them with uh, all the communications that everyone uses Bath Life. Yeah. Uh, and of course, we've had somebody what we call the essential print work still. Um, you know, a few of our NHS providers have been in contact with us and needing some very last minute stuff for... You know, either education stuff before the vaccine arrived, and now with the rollout of the vaccine, we've had uh, quite a few orders there for the very important leaflet that everyone needs to be given. You know, nothing can replace that when someone's sitting there having it. So we've had some, you know, some, some real essential printing orders there, which you know, if we haven't been open for, we wouldn't be doing, and uh, we've been struggling to get supplies. Of those. We've we've had a, a couple of points uh, externally. One question, one one observation. The question from uh, Maxine Ward. Um, do you like to ask uh, what you have done and how you've been doing is to check in on the well-being of uh, your employees during a period that's been so challenging for us at all? And, and maybe what, what initiatives or, or simply just, just smart ideas? Um, of course, I'm sure we've all, you've all used uh, Teams and Zoom and phone calls and WhatsApp and so on. What else have you been doing? How have you been checking in on that particular point about well-being? Maybe for you, Joe, think about yeah. Sarah particularly. Yes, I think 
Perhaps also, sorry, perhaps also for clients as well as for your business, yeah. Encouraging my clients to be regularly checking in if people aren't coming online or they're not, you know, on their video, maybe making a call afterwards just to see how they're doing. Um, so it's being quite proactive about it. Um, we've been sending out um, you know, information about the mental health support, some sort of slideshows and things just to give people that information. Yeah, there's, I, I think it's also mixing, mixing it up a little bit. So, you know, we have daily team calls, um, but then it's also about trying to put some of the social aspect into it that, that we miss out on, just mm. those regular, regular connection points. I know that as, you know, for clients as well, as it came up to the end of last year, people were really tired. The emotional impact of handling nine months of continuous uncertainty and, and pressure and strain were really, really wearing down. So a lot of clients did things like resilient um, seminars, you know, trying to do some yoga check-ins, so put some fun things back in just to try and alleviate some of that. And then a lot of people took Christmas off, properly off. Yeah. Um, and, and shut the doors, which I think was really vital for everyone. There you go, either for Minuteman or, or for stuff you've heard with clients and so on. Um, that, that point about uh, well-being of teams and individuals. Yeah, well, we've been, I suppose, lucky in a way that we, we have to print stuff, so I need people here every now and then. Um, the first lockdown, everyone was there, there's there literally nothing to do at all. I think since the ability to uh, have flexibility around further and bringing teams back, as and when we need them, who certainly helped, uh, certainly through November and, and certainly this month. So we, you know, we the press is kind of being fair, of predicting what's coming in, which is almost unpredictable. You know, quite often you're saying, right, okay, that you, we won't see you for a couple of weeks, or, or actually things have picked up, something's happened. And um, it's interesting if I could touch on the next question, Dan, Greg. Uh, we've got a question there about Brexit, and and that can, can I take that separately, Dave? I've got, I've got a yeah. What do you want to make about that? Um, uh, other, just on that well-being point, I think it is, uh, given the importance of this, uh, we will do a Bath Life Business Club uh, about uh, well-being. And I think that sense of, you know, sharing, if not best practice, but simply this works for us. This is, this is how we're running it. We're all, we're all figuring out those new ways. And, and exactly whether it's checking in, as you're saying, we don't have the chance of that social glue of, of our teams work together uh, in, in all no. I would say just an, on, on that point, you know, with, with checking in, the phone is your friend. I think we, we all rely on Zoom, but actually a personal mm -hmm. phone call, a one-on-one, -on -one, you know, without the pressure of what has to be done or what needs to be done yeah. can, can really help. Yeah, this, um, this uh, is, is a weird intimacy that happens. We're, we're, we've, we've never been further apart and yet we're closer still. Yeah. We, we are sharing time, you know, this sort of FaceTime or phone calls or whatever. Uh, in a way we haven't done previously, but uh, because because our, our working days don't exist in the same way, we don't have those those tram lines, those parameters. I think everybody tends to sort of leech over into different times. We don't have the you know, taking kids to school type stuff and so on, and it, all of this uh, plays into people's sense of well-being. Uh, so we will pick that up in more detail subsequently. There is a point, and I think on that, Craig, it's probably made a big change into the future way we all work. Um, mm. I'm not saying we're all going to be working from home but i think certainly in different ways you know the, the, the working day is going to change i can't see us all moving back to nine no. to five jobs i think the difference in flexibility the ways of working is going to be there you know even ourselves i've got different teams in at the moment at different times because i don't want everyone on site at the same time so trying to kind of split how we work um mm -hmm. schools is really interesting as well greg i've got two kids who are who are working at school, at virtual school in the morning, are logging in at half past eight for two to three, right through to the end of the day. I think there's going to be a huge change into the way how schools operate because they're going to see some potentials. I think they're going to see some pitfalls. I think there's going to be a huge conversation around the future of school buildings and how kids are taught. Uh, yeah. You know, it's accelerated what's been happening for years and years uh, with, yes, kids at school, but also employees and how we, how we work into the future. Yeah, that, that, that latter point, this great pause has also been a great accelerator. 
Um, that stuff which was latent has now been uh, been more visible or moving faster. And we have had this uh, this observation about uh, a Brexit, um, which I'd like to frame this way. So good old anonymous attendee, we always enjoy having that person. Um, your interview companies have not mentioned the added pressure of the new post-Brexit climate. Post-Brexit, we're only about 20 days, gosh. Um, scrambling to sort out paperwork on European clients. Can you include the tr this traumatic business pressure in a further interview another time? I think we should do that. We've we've slightly shied away from the, the Brexit thing because we've had <laughs> the more immediate issues of coronavirus and how we're navigating. Um, we'll come back to pick up Brexit as a bigger topic elsewhere, but just briefly for you each, um, either your businesses or for your clients, ha has there been a, a Brexit effect just yet? What do you what do you expect? Absolutely. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah real, real impact, real, real tangible impact. Uh, you know, we we use paper. Most of our paper mills are in Europe. Um, you know, anything that was coming to us from mid-December onwards got turned back at a really critical time for us because the paperwork wasn't right. Uh, we also shipped to Europe. You know, I know that every shipment I do into, into you know, the EU now is going to cost me another £25 per shipment, um, which is doubling the cost. Um, you know, that, that long term is going to have an impact. Um, and and in, in that particular case, I would imagine you, you'd be passing that down to your clients. You're, you're not going to bear the brunt of that cost. No, that's right. Um, and and the, the, this time as well, um, you know, when, when you're shipping tangible items abroad, um, you know, you, you get something wrong like a commodity code because you haven't quite detailed exactly what that item is in one way or another. You know, that's that's, that's a delay. You know, we we work and many of our clients work on, on tight deadlines and schedules and that ability to quickly ship into the EU without delay is so important. Um, you know, so we've got time and we've got money. You know, two key things that businesses uh, profit on. Joe jo or, or Ronnie, Brexit. Yeah, uh, it, it has had an enormous impact um, from, from speaking to uh, in-house inspired room design. It's based up in Newcastle. They import um, kitchens, bathrooms, bedrooms from Germany and Italy, and they represent 500 retailers around the UK. So the amount of paperwork, and I think it, it definitely was a double blow. We knew it was coming, but because of the lateness of the deal that went through, we were, every, everybody was just held in this situation of not quite being able to press go on anything. And then it hit immediately. So the amount of additional paperwork logistics is enormous. Um, I was speaking to an accountancy practice last night and they're finding exactly the same thing. You know, not only, in fact, her, her phrase was, I'm going to go and join my payroll person who's been in the corner for nine months staring at a white wall, because now I have to not only deal with all of furlough and all of the complexity of that, but now we have to advise and help clients on all of the paperwork that comes yeah. through for Brexit. Uh, so it's enormous. It's enormous. And Joe, whatever you, you or your clients might have experienced so far, there is um, uh, a looming shadow of the working time directive being uh, altered, and we can only imagine uh, which way it's going to be altered, um, which would be, you know, deleterious to to many uh, UK employees. Um, how how are you looking at that vista of the impact of Brexit, short term, right now, but really near term as well? Yeah, I mean, I think when I was preparing just a few notes for today, I wrote, "We're also focused on COVID, but there is still this B word, um, Brexit," and you know, I think it's going to present lots of challenges from an HR perspective in the coming year, um, you know, around, you know, rights to work and changes to employment legislation. Unfortunately, and we're still waiting really to see what's the sponsorships, that type of thing. So, um, and I'm already seeing some of my clients, uh, some Ronnie and Dave have said about the additional costs, um, yeah. bringing products in and whether that's going to result in redundancies in the future, who knows? Uh, these are all uh, happy areas. Someone pointed out the other day that uh, as, a, 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 as a nation or even as a world, we've been faced with ABC. We've had austerity. Uh, we've got now this nation's got Brexit and we've had coronavirus. Uh, let's hope there's not a D on the horizon, whatever that Absolutely. might be. Um, John, John Callum has asked to point, um, arts and cultural organisations cri critically depend on corporate sponsorships. Uh, he, uh, John is, I'm, I'm sure, specifically thinking in terms of Bath festivals, but it's true of all arts organisations. He, he personally has been a, a strong pa patron of those. Can, can the panellists comment on the prospects for ongoing support and advise how the arts organisations can better connect with service businesses such as yourselves 
retain or to seek new help. How, how, how do you and how do your, your clients, how might they connect with arts organisations which desperately need support? I think, Craig, this is going to be a really tough year um, for every business out there, almost. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't think any business out there is going to be coming at the end of this year with, with huge profits and the ability to give as generously as what we've been able to previously. Um, you know, it's, it's really difficult. You know, this year we've, we, through my business or my wife's company, we, we've managed to support, um, you know, the, the RUH for friends of Bill with, with various things and so on. Um, but, you know, I know through my experience through the 1% Club uh, in, in Bath it, it's always been very difficult and businesses have always managed to give either financially or in kind. Um, I imagine moving forward more than we want to give in kind, but charities still need cash. That, that, you know, whichever way you look at charities need cash. Um, the squeeze on the public sector over the years has put more reliance on the third sector and charities delivering real services. You know, with public sector funding under the squeeze and, and, and I think private funding and donations into charities, um, you know, being squeezed, it's going to be a really tough time. Uh, it's, it's going, I, I know the government have done some work already um, and here helping to support a number of charities. Um, how long that can last, who knows? At some point, furlough, grants, um, all these uh, all these other great things the government have done this year for us, at some point we've got to own up and we've got to be paying this back. Um, and we're only going to see further squeezes on the public sector um, moving forward. Therefore, third sector, public, the, the charities and, and so on out there are going to be are going to be struggling more and more and looking for private sector businesses to help fund them. Um, one could argue it's a short-term flip. You know, most people go into business for a good number of years and are not here to you know, to, to disappear after a couple of years. Uh, so, you know, but it's going to be that interim funding between now and when things pick back up, which we're probably talking five, seven years into the future. Um, it's going to be that bit which we, which we're going to need somehow to help these charities. Uh, move forward. Well, just on that point about so the effect on the public purse down the line, that um, that remains an option rather than an inevitability. There's a there's a macroeconomic theory which I'll, I'll, I'll spare everyone, which says that that is a way of structuring the debt such that it doesn't have the deleterious effect that it might otherwise do in the short term, as happened in austerity in 2010. But we'll save that for another time. Yeah. Can, can I pick? On. Can I just pick up quickly on on what John was saying because I I think this also comes back to some of the the work that businesses have been doing about trying to understand actually what they want to be in the future and support and the values, mm -hmm. support for local organisations, arts and cultural organisations and charitable initiatives are really important. And I think that just like there has been a movement towards supporting independent businesses and shopping locally, so that will also extend to community cultural and arts programs and charitable initiatives on, on a local scale initially. Because all of us together, I think are really wanting to rebuild. Um, we had in, I know you'll come on to some of the new business things, Greg, but from a professional services perspective, they want to be able to connect with people they want to be able to form those collaborations and find those, those networks and referrals that at the moment there aren't there. Cultural and arts organisations hold some of those connections that could be highly valuable. So it's a case of matching, again, between what the company wants and what the arts and cultural organisation provides. But I think there are opportunities. And that whole point about the living culture of cities, which uh, arts in particular provide, uh, social glue also that, that charities uh, enable. And uh, there's, been, there's been a government announcement looking for initiatives um, of how people can start to rebuild communities at a, at a very local level, communities that have been hit by COVID. So uh, there are things that are happening in that space, but it is more difficult to form those relationships at the moment just by the nature. And, and, and one other observation you mentioned about um, the, the, the skill sets and so on of different sectors. Um, it's been very clear for, for a number of years, well pre the pandemic, that the tech sector, the whole concept of tech for good uh, is, is an extremely important characteristic. And it may be that there are businesses out there who have skills. It's not, you know, arts organisations like charities always need money, but they also need skills and there may be benefits in kind. Uh, which uh, companies can Bridge give day. advice on, you know, marketing, content, whatever it else it might be. Um, 
if I may, I, I want to just move uh, move back to um, a point about well-being. Uh, Elle Chappell's uh, dropped a very helpful line. And uh, she's saying that um, her clients have been saying that people have had Zoom fatigue. Really? <laughs> I think we probably, you know, we, we all recognise that. We all uh, we try to negate it, but it, it, it is a proper thing, isn't it? They don't always like being on camera, of course, uh, which we all totally understand. She's found a useful team um, uh, icebreaker tool they've used on team facilitation as something called Menti, M-E-N-T-I. Um, we'll try and uh, include that in our comms. This is being live tweeted. Uh, and if I could ask our, our marketing team to mention Menti, um, and ideally uh, get a link to it because uh, on the face of it, this may be something which is beneficial. Um, uh, Elle says, you can use it to relax people and help set the mood. Um, I think I need to look into that myself. Uh, also ask people uh, to grab a random object in the room they're in and bring it to the screen to chat about and may represent their day or feelings. It's really helped with people that don't feel comfortable. So a random object, well, I haven't got a random object, I've got a cup of, cup of coffee, so I'm <laughs> said. Um, there's someone else here, um, Anne, Anne Twitchett. Um, uh, she, she wants to give a shout out to her son's business. And to be honest, I think we might as well. Um, we, we can all do what we can. She's, uh, she's saying her son's business, business, Round Hill Roastery in Midsummer Norton, it's a coffee business. Um, they, huh, as it happens, it's back to the Brexit point. They've got problems with dollars uh, over um, Brexit negotiations and now the pandemic. Um, uh, still, we wish her and of course her son and his business uh, all the very best. Let's come back to the, the new business point. How have you each sought to drum up new business in these times? You've got existing businesses which one way or another are tapering or, or quieter or how one defines it. Every business always wants new business. What have you been doing to get new business? I, I, I'll, I'll have a, a look because I also know that, uh, that Dan's on the call who heads up um, some of the business development for us. And it has, it has been tough. You know, all of those channels that you, that you rely on, the networking, the Bath Life business lunches, um, all of the the awards that we all miss, you know, they, those have gone. So it is very much back to building um, and our, our strategy is one relationship at a time. You know, let's let's just build those close relationships. Let's use the ability that we have to get into people's um, homes through video conferencing. Um, some of that has actually really been helpful at establishing those relationships. And then it's reconnecting. I, I think we are always so focused on the new that we sometimes forget about all of those connections that we formed over our careers and sometimes it's just as worthwhile to go back and look at who you haven't spoken to for quite a long time you know who has has dropped off your radar um, and and utilize that as an approach yeah sorry I, I was gonna say i'd agree a lot of my work is based on relationships and you know, in the absence of face-to-face -face networking, it's definitely been a challenge. Um, and, we, you know, prior to break, prior to um, lockdown, we set up with two other companies, the Bath HR Network, to provide a sort of collaborative platform um, for the, the HR um, community in Bath to share ideas, get support. Um, and Ronnie very kindly did a talk for us last year. But that's been a great way to maintain those relationships and make new connections. Um, and, you know, I think, you know, from an HR perspective, having that support, especially as a consultant who works on her own, being able to get support from other people within the HR community has been invaluable. I think um, for us, Greg, being here and being open certainly, certainly has helped. Um, in our industry, there's a good number of printers uh, recently who've gone to the wall because they, they did shut their doors and weren't there for their clients. Um, you know, us maintaining our presence and the ability to actually um, deliver goods uh, has certainly helped. Um, it's quite interesting, actually, over the past six months, I'd say we've probably picked up more new clients uh, than, uh, than, than any other previous six month period, because we're finding a, a lot of actually new businesses starting out. Uh, companies who have <laughs> either repurposed, like Veronica has, um, companies who, or individuals who maybe lost their jobs, uh, taking a redundancy payout of some sort. And, you know, they sat there, so there's nothing else to do. Um, I'd better go it alone. Uh, so we, we, we've had a lot of, um, of new businesses approach us that we've recently started. And because we do design, right, so the print and fulfillment, we, we've been able to kind of look after every step of the process for them. And then I suppose product for us, uh, we've really focused on the Ottawa Rain, the door to door uh, services and direct mail. Um, clearly, June, July time, 
for us uh, the good thing is developing our signage up there around all those um, floor stickers COVID safe type work um, you know August in fact we were we were 20 percent up on on the previous August uh, mostly due to us getting people's offices ready for potential return to work um, and we actually found uh, November's lockdown was actually a lot, a lot better than what we expected it to be uh, because we found a lot more companies and individuals wanting to send uh, smaller greeting card orders out and, and things back to their clients so just to say hello we're still here um, so it's been, it been a bit of a mix really the bounce back campaign to some extent helped find new contacts we, we hadn't heard of before and we, and we worked with Bath Beard on the um, bounce back art competitions twice actually it went, went so well in the summer uh, we did it again for Christmas um, and, and again that kind of general awareness has helped and that's around about not really at that point making any, any money that's about just being supportive of our local community um, and, and engaging with a, a wider group of people. In, in a sense this is this is something of a, of a reality check of course um, all our concerns in business about you know where we're going, what the new business might be, and so on. The reality is there is business out there. There's, there's some good business to be had. You, you're each pick up new clients. We, we are in our business as well. Uh, yeah, you have to, to pivot, you have to focus, you have to think differently, and so on. Um, but, but I wouldn't want it to be, you know, the message of all of this to be that it's all bloody dismal. We've got the, the Brexit, it be, be worse its impact. We've got uh, working time directors, we've got redundancy. Ugh, all of that is happening. But there's business out there. It's quite clear that having been stymied in, in 2020, businesses need the new routes to market. They need to get in front of people in whichever way. Uh, and, and, you know, it's encouraging that you're saying that. It's what we're trying to do as a business exactly as well. And um, I want to put it back to you as, as, as uh, you know, uh, senior business people and so on. Is there a part of you, and wait for this one, that's actually quite enjoyed these times because you were challenged in a way that you've probably never been challenged in your business life previously to work out what you are going to do? Or is it all, bloody hell, let's just get through it? Um, there, there, there is, yeah. I, I think there absolutely is a point. I mean, to, to me, my absolute nemesis is boredom. So I'm, I'm terrible being bored. So the, the more challenge that, that's put in front, as, as long as, and I, I would absolutely say, that, you know, the first six, eight, 12 weeks um, from March last year was a gut punch. And I, I did, you know, pull the duvet up and hunker down a little bit because I found it difficult. Personally and emotionally, I found it really difficult. Coming out of that, there, there's been an enormous sense of energy and optimism and that actually we can, really push forward and do things in a way things that we want to do and things differently and that is very exciting um, well, and you rightly sorry you go sorry go no I was just saying you, you know you rightly said we I think we have to be really careful not to talk ourselves into a negative mindset uh, and one of my clients always uses the phrase opportunity is now here and if you run it together it's opportunity is nowhere and it just as your attitude and if you get the right attitude and you have the right drive and you know I'm lucky I've got a fantastic team that you know you can do really well and achieve really good things. But there's also and it's, it's a way of defining a negative as a positive it, there's also the sense of my god if we can get through this you think of all that's been thrown at us as, as, as business owners people within companies responsible for our our teams our clients whatever else we can get through that. My God, what could we do when times do begin to pick up whenever that is? And, and the other point we're, we're experiencing with a number of clients is they're, they're doing the see-through. It's quite clear it's going to be tough. Absolutely. Whatever language you want to use, tough the next few weeks, few months, whatever. But it's about positioning yourselves for that midterm of being, uh, dare I say, match fit now because the season is about to start. You don't just do hunger down, do nothing. Get out there, generate the new business, promote yourselves, find new things. Um, and I want, in that vein, I want to pick up a, a question from Sherry Ann, uh, um, individual, Sherry Ann Baxter. Um, individual, by the way, did a, a couple of business surgeries with us last year, and that was one of their ways of generating new business. Uh, and uh, if I haven't already, I'd recommend business surgeries to people. Anyway, um, she says, um, what are you looking forward to this year? What opportunities do you think there are out there in 2021 we could be striving for? I'm looking forward to a holiday, Greg. That's what I'm looking forward to. <laughs> Dave, I'm totally honest. My Dave, opinion is getting on a plane. And we can't strive for a holiday for you. But... 
I, I think I think this year is going to be interesting. I think mean, any any business which is, which is still trading, um, come easing of lockdown measures and pandemic stuff, I think any business which is still trading then are, are going to be stronger than ever. They're going to really appreciate the uh, the business connections they've got. They're going to value business relationships. Um, I think they're going to value working a bit more locally as well, which will, which will certainly help everyone uh, in, in Bath and the surrounding area. Um, so I'm quite looking forward to, um, it, it's been a hard year, let's, let's face it, it's not, it's not been easy. Um, there's been parts of it I've enjoyed, certainly. Um, I quite enjoyed learning how to use the printer again, I only broke it once. Um, I'm sorry, you learned how to use a printer. What, what, what is your business, Dave? I mean, really? Well, yeah, I, I, I kind of like, I, I, I'm, I can kind of sell print and things, but when it comes to actually getting involved with printing on the machine, um, that, that's a bit of a different challenge. Um, okay. I, but but so, so actually, I quite enjoyed getting hands on again mm. and, and actually, yes, you know, d doing the quoting, doing the proofing, getting it ready, and then, and then popping down to the production unit and actually kind of printing out and finishing it has been quite nice. Um, my production manager comes back in and sees what I've done and is an absolute despair. But um, of course. He, he, yeah, of course, I've kind of completely ruined this, this bit of kit. But um, but you know that that has, in a way, having to come in with a with a smaller team because we have had to furlough people in order to make sure financially we can survive the end of this. Mm -hmm. um, you know, being that a lot more hands on and I didn't used to necessarily see many of the finished products that we we've done to, 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 to such an extent. So being hands-on and, and, and right through that process to, to the end has been quite rewarding. Um, but I, I think, yeah, it, it, I, I'd like to think this time next year, any business which is still around, which there will be many, many, and there'll be a lot more new businesses, uh, I think will be doing very well indeed. Would have been burnished in the flame of this experience, in, in, in <laughs> yes. at least uh, semi-poetically. Um, how about you, uh, Joe or Ronnie? Uh, what are you looking forward to from a business point of view? Not, not the holiday thing that Dave uh, mentioned at the beginning. <laughs> I, yeah, I, I'm excited about from an HR perspective. I think, you know, one of the positives coming out of this is that, you know, it's been a human crisis and it's really raised the profile of HR and that, you know, HR can add value to a business. Um, and I think it's also changed the way that we work. I mean, I've been banging on for years with clients about the need to be flexible in order to retain and attract really good talent. Um, and this, you know, the pandemic has forced businesses to look at that in a different way and to embrace technology to enable people to work more remotely so I really hope that that's something that comes out of this and it continues um, and I think you know as Dave was saying for the businesses that survive this um, I think there'll be lots of opportunity um, I think you know we'll be looking at engagement and getting those people who are coming back into the workplace more engaged um, so yeah I think from an HR perspective there's lots of interesting and challenging projects to get involved in. And, and, and clearly the, there's a bigger piece around that which we'd love to explore um, uh, with, with you and with others about that whole remote working relationship with teams, trust, uh, you know, the whole, even the concept of working from home. Uh, we're all going to uh, uh, embrace or experience it one way or another. So we will run a, a club or, or a surgery on that at uh, some point. Ronnie, how about you? What are you looking forward to? So I, I, I think there are opportunities for, for growth. You know, we are all seeing a future that potentially is going to get brighter again so there there is definitely opportunity for for growth out there interestingly a number of clients that i've been speaking to have decided that now is the time for acquisitions and mm. mergers so i think we'll see quite a lot of activity on that front and that's not just a case of um you know buying distressed companies uh, it is also a proactive idea of could we be stronger together can we form closer mm. um acquisition uh, closer collaborations are there acquisitions in adjunct industries that might benefit us so i think there'll be quite a lot of m&a activity going on as well Funnily enough, um, we just had a session earlier this morning in, in some place called Bristol, uh, the Bristol Life Business Surgery, uh, and that was with Roy Twithy King, you know, we all know them in, in Bath, but they have the, this Bristol practice precisely around M&A, and they likewise are expecting uh, much activity, uh, whether it is the distressed assets, as, as you mentioned, or whether it's a strategic growth, um, yeah. people seeing opportunities out there. Um, if there are other, you know, legal firms watching this, We'd, be, we'd love to run a session on M&A work in, in Bath because it, it is, it's one of the life, lifebloods of businesses. Um, we've had a, a question from um, 
uh, anonymous attendee who's been uh, particularly busy today. Uh, do you think that COVID has revealed the companies that work with integrity uh, to those who are more self-focused and now so concerned about the impact on others internally and externally? There seems some large divides right now in focus. So in other words, um, it's, I've heard it expressed when, when the tide goes out, the truth is revealed and you see companies for what they are. Uh, Ronnie, in your, your more your comms area, do you see that, that the integrity element or authenticity, which is closely related, uh, has been more pertinent? I think there, there is definitely something in that and that, you know, as I mentioned, a lot of companies have been looking at the, their values, what they really believe in, what they really focus on. And it also links back into Joe's area. When you are dealing with people who are having to um, work remotely, um, all of those issues that we previously hadn't dealt with, uh, which were aspects of flexible working, which a lot of companies had said, no, you know, that's not for us. We need people to be in the office because we need to check what's happening. It has accelerated that, that mm -hmm. form of change. And it, a, you, you actually can build a real culture and a real trust. And our team is, is, has been fantastic with that. And actually we've developed really close bonds. I, I've taken on people that I've never actually worked in an office with, mm. you know, which would have been totally and utterly unthinkable, uh, even, you know, nine months ago at the start of the year that I'd, I'd bring on somebody and I would never actually spend more than, I think we've had two hours in each other's company during those times when you could actually get together and have a cup of coffee and the rest of time has been remote. And yet they've, they're an integral part of, of the culture of the company and I couldn't see it without them. So there, there is a case of trust really being important and the culture that can be formed through that. Uh, so yeah, I, I think the values of a company really do come through. Mm. Take a stand back point, uh, not, not your sector, not your clients, uh, for Bath as a whole, as a city. Um, how do you think Bath will fare in the, in the, the near to midterm, perhaps insulated from some of the worst that uh, others are experiencing, but still affected? How, how do you see the, the Bath economy? I'll perhaps start with you, Dave, on this. You're connected to so many. Yeah, I think um, I always like to think our, our business is a good barometer of where the economy is going in, in the city. If people are spending on, on marketing, uh, they're generally a little bit, uh, they're clearly a bit of hope there for them in there and they're thinking things are going to improve it's it's really difficult when you when you, when you come in I, I, I walk in each day spend a couple of hours in the office and disappear and you just have to walk through the city centre to see yeah there's a little bit of doom and gloom on the high street there's uh, properties which are changing hands businesses which are, which are disappearing I think there's going to be a huge challenge around home working and, and what the future of office space is in the city centre you know Bath needs people in it to make some money. Um, it, we, we've got what, what's going to happen around tourism over over the next year. It all depends on how freely people can move uh, around around the world. That's, that's, a, that's a big global issue for us. And Bath, and I know the council are looking at why we're so resilient on tourism and so on. Actually, we're not necessarily that. We're not resilient when it comes to our reliance on that on that tourist spend. But I think it will come back. Uh, I think it will come back stronger than ever. Ever. You know, I said earlier, the, the one thing I'm looking forward to this year is flying off and taking a holiday somewhere. Replicate that everywhere. Everyone's, as soon as we're okay, we're going to appreciate um, how much travel um, we, we enjoy doing and how much we like to go into other places. And whether or not that's going to be international tourists coming in or, or our homestays, such people coming from elsewhere in the UK to visit our city, we're in a really good position still for that. Um, I think the retail offer will bounce back. I think we still need to be reviewing the usage of the high street. It's not about walking into a shop and picking a shirt off of there. It's about the experience. And I think Bath is an experience coming into our high street, stopping off at the small cafes, wine bars, whichever it is you, you enjoy. Um, I think we have to embrace that and we have to be ready for it. So the hospitality industry for Bath is still really important. And um, yeah. we, are, we are lucky. We still have a lot of very successful tech and creative firms in the city that quite often get forgotten. Um, so, you know, again, there's some, there's some amazing work doing that. Uh, you've probably heard of Bath Unlimited. Uh, Kevin and the team at Woods, Woody King and, and others are very much involved in, in pushing that forward. And that's just highlighting how many unbelievable successful businesses we have 
in Bath and, and, and we really need to celebrate and I, I know the Bath Life Awards will be there to help celebrate those businesses further and help promote those but I think we're I think as a city we should be quite resilient we should be coming back much much stronger than many others and, and we also have in Bath uh, a lot of older people uh, with a lot of money um, who will still have that money because they haven't been relying on more money coming in uh, so I think we'll um, you know we, we will always be on the front foot when it comes to the so, so uh, some positive perspectives on Bath and that point about older money there's also it looks all the analysis seems to be suggesting is there's going to be yet more London money coming to Bath people who are yeah. you know, downsizing who can work from home in a way they didn't even think they could previously that's always been a key uh, economic driver for Bath but the the, the statistical uh, analyses appears to suggest that that trend will accelerate or is accelerating currently so Bath will be more buoyed up. Joe, uh, Ronnie, uh, brief thoughts on Bath's destiny <laughs> in a sentence or two. How, how well placed are we in the coming weeks and months? Or months and quarters, at least. I think very well placed. Um, and I'd echo, uh, I'd echo Dave's, uh, Dave's point. And I think also we'll, we'll develop even more of our own identity because as people start to stay closer in both the villages and also the main city centre and less of the draw of London or other of the big lights, I think we'll, we'll actually have a far greater focus on really building the, the community and the culture that makes Bath so special. The community and the culture, lockdown makes everything local. And there's few places better locally than Bath. Joe, um, Yeah, just echoing what the other two said really and how what I've noticed is how collaborative and supportive um, the business community is in Bath um, and that's just been one of the pleasures of being able to work in this city. Yeah it's um, Bath small enough for lots of people to know lots of people yeah. and, uh, and that sense of collaboration is, is actually easier to achieve in a smaller city than in a larger I guess. I did I, yeah I would say actually on, on just picking up on Joe's note you know with, with what they do with the Bath HR network and others the importance of, of being able to, to form relationships with other business owners and to support each other through that. And that's what I've really, really appreciated. Well, I did have an end question, which is, are, are you an optimist? Um, but I decided there's no point in asking. <laughs> yes. yes. Of course you are, um, which, which is really appreciated. I mean, I, I've, I felt, you know, buoyed up by this. It's been great to hear your, your tales, your thoughts, your experiences. Uh, and I hope uh, people watching this likewise. So thank you to our speakers, uh, Ronnie from Transform, Dave from Miniman, and Joe from Keystone. Uh, also to all who contributed. And by the way, that point that Elle raised uh, we about Menti, we have put that link around on our social media. So, you know, we can all share and things which we find interesting and useful. Thank you. For Fantastic. Thank questions. you very much. Thanks all. Thank you. Cheers. Bye. Thank you to our, to our sponsor, Mojas Druitt, as well, for this business club. And please look out for the, that business surgery with them shortly about all aspects of business advice. Uh, again, continuingly, thank you for your support for Bath Life. Uh, we love publishing the magazine. We love celebrating the city. And we do rely very much on your support for it. Good luck to all of you in the coming months. This has been a Media Clash production, and this has been the latest Bath Life Business Club. Bath together, always. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.